We never once talked about having a scooter for track day on my channel. Today's the day. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me today. Today we have a special one. We are not at the track. I'm at a playground as you can see, but I'm still going to illustrate to you why I think having an electric scooter is one of the most important tools you can have on a track day. Let me just start off by saying this. I'm usually one of the first people through the gate when it, when it comes to a track day because I hate feeling like I'm being rushed. And with the Type R that I mostly track, uh, and, and even the Supra down the road, there is some prep time involved. You, you want to get your tires put on, uh, swapped on if you're swapping them at the track. You want to check your torque specs. You want to check your tire pressures. You've you got to unload the car, take your tools out, your chair, your water, your food for the day, blah, 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 blah. All this stuff takes time. And then on top of that, you still have to go get checked in, get your wristband, maybe do a morning meeting for the flags. And soon enough, all of your time before the first session is gone. So that is why having a scooter like the Chroma E68 electric scooter is an amazing tool to have. Now, you guys know from watching my channel uh, or you should know, if you don't, subscribe, that I have a uh, Moto Compacto, okay? I love my Moto Compacto. The Honda Moto Compacto is super cool. I got mine wrapped, it looks wicked. And as much as I love that scooter, it's not the most comfortable thing to ride, okay? And it's not cheap. It's a thousand dollars. It's a thousand dollars retail. You know, so it's not, it's by far not the cheapest scooter. And for the money, if I'm just being honest, it doesn't ride that great for the money. But that's not the reason why you get the Moto Compacto. You get it because it's like got this ultimate cool factor, right? Honda fanboy. If you're a Honda fanboy, you're gonna get the Moto Compacto. That's just the way it goes. But, but if you don't have that kind of disposable income and you still want to have a scooter either to ride around uh, locally or on track days i really think guys honestly this is the answer i've had a lot of scooters over the years a lot of scooters i've had everything from you know the the actually kind of started at about four or five hundred dollar scooters all the way up to $4,500 scooters. I'm talking about these ones that will do like 65, 70 miles per hour. Completely nuts, okay? I've, I've experienced the entire spectrum. I am an experienced scooter rider. And I'll tell you for the money, I did a video on this scooter already, a full video review on this scooter already on my other channel, uh, The Dad Cave. I wanted to do it on that channel first because I really wanted to explore whether I truly enjoy this product or not. That's how much I care about you guys. I'm putting it on the main channel now 
because I only put stuff here that I believe in my heart of hearts is something that I can stand behind and something, a product that I can, that I believe in and something that I think will bring value to you. Here we are, okay? Don't take it lightly because I think about these things, guys, okay? So I'll probably um, cut back and forth to some clips that I uh, did earlier in, in front of my house. But I wanna illustrate something else to you. Here's, here's the core issue. Besides the time thing on track days, here's the core issue with why track days can be such a time sink and time can get away from you in between sessions if you're not paying attention. Let's say you've got your par car parked here, okay? You got your car parked here. I like to car park my car on track days as close to the track entrance as possible and where the track exits are just so I can get on the track first and I can come off the track and be pretty close to where my car is parked. The problem with that is it's not typically close to the clubhouse where the cafe might be for food, restrooms, checking in, driver meetings, yada, 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 all that stuff, okay? So imagine for a second, if you will, that you are here and the clubhouse is all the way down there, which honestly, that guy, like that community clubhouse there is the track clubhouse. That is definitely not far-fetched. Actually, I would say that's, that's pretty accurate. If you're at Thunder Hill and you're at the track entrance versus where the clubhouse is, that is a very real distance. And to walk that, it's fine, you can do it, uh, but it's a long track day. Track days will tire you out, you get hot, you do a lot of walking anyways. Just having a scooter makes quality of life so much better. And that is the main reason for having a scooter for track day. Now let's cut back to the other part of the video where I explain to you what's so amazing about this scooter right here. What I wanna to talk to you about is where should you realistically draw the line? Now that's gonna matter, that's gonna depend on you as the individual and what your budget is, your threshold for monetary pain, if you will, and uh, what features and comfort level you're looking for. What if you don't wanna spend a thousand bucks or what if you don't have a thousand dollars to spend and you still want a nice comfortable scooter uh, that maybe you can use for short commutes and uh, you don't wanna break the budget and maybe you've got less than 500 bucks. Bang for the buck, in my opinion, this is the best scooter I have personally experienced on the market for this price range. I would not say that unless I absolutely believed it. Check this out, guys. Look at this scooter. This thing, it looks like a lot of scooters, okay? I will admit that. It looks like a lot of scooters. But there's a lot of really good, high quality details that I've noticed they put a lot of attention into that you don't always Actually, you, you pretty much never get at this price point. I haven't seen it anyways. You normally would have to spend, you know, well past $500 to see this level of quality scooter. That's a big statement. It really is a big statement, but that's really how I, how I see this. So this is the Coroma E68 electric scooter. It's 500 watt motor, 20 mile per hour top speed, 25 miles of range, uh, 10 inch solid tires, 40 volt battery, and it's foldable. Now there's a seat that comes installed on the scooter, and that's this guy over here. I took it off, you can remove it. There's a couple of bolts, one, two there, two on the other side. It sits right there, just like that, okay? And it could be a ride along scooter. This seat is actually really comfortable. It's nice and squishy. It's thick enough. You know, you're not going to hurt your booty. It's very com comfortable to ride it this way, but I'm not really a sit-down rider. So I removed it, 
took the bolts off, took the seat off, and you're going. Now, what I like about it is the attention to detail. I mean, look, there's little markings on the post for how high you wanna set it. There's no real play in this, it's a solid lock. I like it, it's a solid dual locking mechanism for the base plate as well. And even on the handle itself, where did it go? Yeah, even on the handle itself, there's little measurements right there so you, you know where to set it each time if you have a couple of different riders or if you're setting it for sitting down or standing up, you can always get back to the same settings. Now another thing that I look at is the welds. The welds in this construction are very, very clean. The frame itself is very solid. It's super easy to uh, fold down. So you just lift up this notch right here, pull that forward, this folds down, and then you're good to go. Uh, it's about 35 pounds in weight, so it's not, it's not super light. Given the 25 mile range, I think it's fairly reasonable. To unlock it, it's real easy, you just pull on that. And then it comes up. This locks back into place, just like that. And you're good to go. All right, let's do point of view ride here and show you the different modes on the uh, Coroma electric scooter. So if you have a power button right here, push and hold, that turns it on. Okay, we have a full battery right now. Light automatically comes on, so don't be alarmed if you see that. Push your button to turn that off if you don't need it. Uh, the plus button is to change the gear up. Minus button is to change the gear down. Brake, throttle, bell. Okay, on the screen here is a review. The white S is your lowest gear. That'll get you to about 10 miles per hour. The yellow S is your second gear, that'll get you to about 15. And the red S will get you max speed, which is 20 miles per hour. Let's start at the lowest gear first and see how that feels. All right, pretty good. Feels pretty stable, nothing, nothing crazy. This is a good mode for beginner riders. Do note that you have to give it a little push, about two, three miles per hour before the accelerator starts working. So let's kick this up to second mode. And right away we get up to 15 miles per hour pretty quick. The brakes are a little bit touchy, so just be aware of that. The brakes are pretty strong, which is not a bad thing, but um, if you're not expecting it, they, uh, they are quite strong. Might want to lean back when uh, hitting the brake just to distribute the weight properly. All right, so 15 miles per hour pretty easily. Let's kick it up to third gear. Corners nicely, no problem there. Accelerating all the way up to the indicated 20 miles per hour. This is a little bit uphill, which is why it's like 19.9, 19.8. We'll turn back around and go downhill and you guys will see what, that, what that's like. But the scooter feels super stable. I don't feel any wobbling, nothing rattling. I mean, it's a really good solid platform. The solid tires don't feel rough at all in fact i would say for solid tires this is on the on the more comfortable end of solid tires let's go up some curbs here see how that feels like all right yeah i mean it's it's a bit bumpy going over curbs and over these uh breaks in the concrete which is to be expected from solid tires 
but uh, not as bad as some of the other solid tires I've felt in the past. And my concern with the handlebars, you know, looseness a little earlier when I was just installing it is a non-factor here. I mean, they feel completely fine when you're riding. 20 miles per hour is, uh, is fine for the way this is set up. The brakes are great though. I will say that, they, they will catch you by surprise. Yeah, overall, just a, wow, just a great scooter. Great scooter, especially for the money. All right, back from the ride. That was good fun, guys. I mean, this thing is pretty darn solid. Couple of other things I want to mention, which is which can be an annoyance on other scooters. The charge port here is right on the neck. It's very easy to get to. Most other scooters have it attached to the battery pack, which is down below, and you're having to bend down to look to see where you're plugging it in or look to find it. It's a, actually, it's a bit of a hassle to, to be honest with you on most other scooters, but right here, it's right on the neck. It's easy to get to, no problem whatsoever. The only minor, 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 minor gripe that I have that I already told Paroma about and uh, their engineers, I have been reassured, are looking into it. But is this little kickstand here. You gotta be careful. It's a little short and a little stubby. So I'm not really putting a lot of force. I'm just moving it forward a little bit. And it's very easy for this thing to come falling over because the kickstand is kind of short and it doesn't stick out very far. It's actually pretty vertical and uh, doesn't offer a lot of levered support. So other than that, this is a pretty damn good scooter for the money. Now I will leave a link in the description below to where you can purchase this scooter for yourself. You will get a 30% discount using my code, which makes this scooter an absolute no-brainer, guys. I mean, sub $300 scooter, uh, sub $400 scooter. I don't know what other scooter with these features, this range, this speed, you can get for that price point. I really don't, not even Costco. I was at Costco the other day and they had a scooter there for, uh, I think it was just under $500. It was like $4.99 or something like that. And uh, it, it had a 15 mile per hour top speed. This has a 20. The range was about the same. Voltage was about the same. And uh, it was a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier. So it's, I, I just, I don't know. I, I can't think of another scooter right now in the market at this price point that offers as much as one does. So. Anyways, if you're looking for an inexpensive scooter for track day or want to just have fun with your friends, maybe with your kids, your family, light transport, that sort of thing, check out Kuroma Scooters. The deal is on the E68 scooter, which is what this is. This is the E68 version. It comes in a couple of different colors. You guys will absolutely love it. Hit the link below if you want to buy it. Otherwise, that is it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Until next time, stay hungry, stay fast, stay tuned. I'm Michael Baxi and I'm out. Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends. I won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now. Up early when the sun is out. Not setting out my own soul, but those real ones, they coming now. Oh look, who's reaching out? Old friends want to feature now. They don't work, so they need it free. Ooh, you reaching out from the west side of that old town. But